Golden Isles TV is proud to feature the first annual car show here on St. Simons Island. This is a fun event and it's all for a good cause. In fact, all proceeds from the event go to our American Legion House. Please join me as we find out more and we'll see some of the cars that are on display here today. Stay tuned, it's all coming up next right here on Golden Isles TV. Hi, I'm Avery Brooks with Golden Isles TV. Thank you for joining us for the first annual car show right here on St. Simons Island called Castaway Cruisers. And we're here with the organizers, um, Ken Rogers and Lewis Rogers. How are y'all? We're doing just great. Thank y'all for coming out. You're welcome. Hi, Lewis. Hi. Nice to meet you. So tell us about the show. We see a lot of old cars, but classic cars. Tell us about the idea behind the show. I'll tell you what we did. Lewis and I were talking one day, and we took his grandfather, Olaf Olsen, to a meeting here at the American Legion. And they didn't have a lot of turnout at the meeting, and they were talking about their budget and how they pay for the hall and pay for the power bill and upkeep the, on, on the place itself. And Lewis had the idea. It was his idea. He said, Dad, why don't we start a car club? and all our membership dues, shirt sales, anything we do for car shows end up going to the American Legion. So every bit of our proceeds go to the American Legion. So I'd have to give my son Lewis credit for that. That's awesome. So this is your idea, huh? Yeah. Uh, when we took my grandfather to the meeting, they were really in need of some help. So we really wanted we to take them on. This is a 1936 Ford Phaeton. It's an exact car that Franklin Delano Roosevelt drove when he was president of the United States from 36 until 1941. They wouldn't let him drive it after Pearl Harbor. Oh my gosh, what a story. This is a beautiful car. There's several beautiful cars, but this one really stands out. So classic. It is a classic. Uh, it's 82 years old. When you get to be 82, everybody's a classic. Right. <laughs> so how did you uh, come upon this car and how have you taken such good care of it all these years? Well, she sleeps in an air-conditioned garage and the gentleman that did it was out in Washington. He's a retired engineer. It only took him seven years and an awful lot of money to make it look good. Wow, wow. Well, I know you're very proud and we yes. appreciate you bringing it today. Oh, you're more than welcome. Pl glad to be here. Hi, we're back with Golden Isles TV and we are here at the American Legion House. Um, tell us what your role is here today. Hi, I'm Linda LaPierre, and I'm here helping the um, people to register. And my husband has a 1951 Chevrolet convertible, so he loves classic cars and has kind of um, gotten me into it also. And so uh, we're here registering at this first annual American Legion car show in support of our veterans. And so um, my dad was a veteran. He actually was at Pearl Harbor on December 7th, 1941. And so I've grown up with a love of this country and the veterans. So our job today is to register the people and we're very happy with the crowd that has come to this first show. We are here with the Pirates of the Spanish Main. We're so excited to be with them today. Uh, they're here helping out. So y'all are here helping out today. Tell me about that. Yes, ma'am. We're just here selling raffle tickets and we're having a lot of fun. Awesome. And um, tell me a little bit about Pirates of the Spanish Main. We're a group of girls who meet here every Wednesday and we do a lot of community service for our community and we just love each other. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you for helping out. They're selling tickets here today to help out the veterans here at the American Legion House and we're so glad y'all are here. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Of course. Um, Lewis, tell me about you build cars, right? This is sort of not just a hobby, but really, really a um, career almost. Tell me about that. Um, I started a company called Hello Hot Rod. We sell t-shirts and hats and all that kind of stuff. And um, we build cars to promote the apparel, I guess you would call it. 
and that's pretty much. He just took on one from a guy. He's going to rebuild a, a Bronco. It's a 1960, uh, 67. 67 Bronco from the ground up. So it helps him, helps the money go to college. Lewis is going to the local college here, so it helps him. And he's studying business, so he's getting a, you know, a lesson on business. Exactly. That's awesome. Well, congratulations on your new business. Thank you. And thanks to all the vets, and I'm a vet as well, and uh, we're, uh, we're just happy to be around. Absolutely. Thank you so much. You're and you're one of the sponsors here, and we really appreciate that. Tell me why you decided to get involved. Um, you know, the veterans give us so much, and they, and it's just unbelievable how they go off and die, and a lot of them don't come back, and it's just uh, a no-brainer to, to give back. So. Absolutely, absolutely. And tell me about your business. You are Bruce Kennedy Tire Company, right? Correct. We're on Nord Street, on the corner of Nord and T Street, and... Um, We've been there 11 years, so so anytime that we can help, we always try to help. So That's awesome. Well, we appreciate your help, and thank you for being a sponsor and supporting the veterans and the American Legion House today. Thank you so much. Tell me what your name is. My name's Peggy Mills, and I li was born and raised on St. Simons, and uh, we have a 1967 Mustang. And um, my father was also a vet. He was in World War II and in the uh, Korean War. And then my son, my son is a, a Marine. So uh, we're from a long line of military, and we just love it. And we're so grateful for everybody coming out. We're just thrilled to death, are we? <laughs> Absolutely. Support our vets. Yes, thank you. So many vets and so many great cars and such a great cause, and we appreciate your time today. Once, once we started our Castaway Cruisers Car Club, we all got together, and there was only like 10 of us that started it, and it's slowly built up to about 25 people now. It's like $25 to join, but like I said, we use that money toward the veterans. We meet every Thursday night. We do cruise-ins at different restaurants to show off our cars. So we've got classic cars. We've got classic trucks. I've got a 1948 truck. Lewis has got a 68 car. And um, we just, as a group, we wanted to come together to try to help out the veterans. So that's Right. And t tell me a little bit about that. Tell me about the Legion House and how it needs repair. We've talked about that. Um, tell me a little bit more about your mission. Okay. 30 years ago, uh, Sonia and I um, got married and I did my rehearsal dinner here. We had a live band, had a barbecue, and it's been here a long time. The floors need repair and the floors are old, the lighting's old inside, and of course they need, you know, insurance payments, they need power bill payments, so whatever we can do to help them. So we're just kind of trying to lift it up. Uh, my company built a fire pit for the guys so they can have burns for the American flags when people drop them off. So anything we can do to help lift it up and let everybody know that a place is for rent and they can have low country bulls. I know you've been to several, I've been to several low country bulls, or Shiro's, stuff like that. So spread the word around, it helps the veterans. So this is an event center. So really, um, yes, we're helping the veterans and their place to, to meet, but it's really an event center for the whole island. So keep that in mind. Welcome back to Golden Isles TV. I'm actually with some veterans here today. Um, really the whole event is to support you guys, the veterans and the American Legion House post 166. Tell me about um, why it's so important for you to um, keep this house going. Well, we uh, we support different organizations and things. Uh, George, tell we, uh, we support the veterans. Uh, we support the uh, children. Have a children's program, fire department, uh, fire program, uh, baseball. Uh, we provide money to uh, veterans that need it if, at, at times. If they're traveling through, we try to help them out or either direct them to where they need to go. And uh, there's an emergency fund for hurricanes and, you know, if a veteran is out in the street, we can uh, give him a little bit of money to help him uh, get back on his feet. Excellent. Well, there you do so many good things uh, with your group and at the Legion House. Tell me a little bit more. Well, this uh, facility was started in 1944. So we've been here a long time. We're really struggling to keep the doors up and we need more veterans to come down and join our organization. All you have to have is active duty, active duty service and be good to go. But we need more members anytime. Absolutely. More members. And you meet once a month or what is your meeting? We do actually a couple meetings a month, the second and third Tuesdays of the month. There's always somebody here at 6.30 till about 8 o'clock normally. Excellent. 
Excellent. Well, thank you so much. You heard him. Come down if you're a veteran and join join the Legion House. And also, it's an event center. So many good things right here on St. Simons Island, and we appreciate your time. Welcome to GITV, Travel, Leisure, Lifestyle Television Network. Come explore the coast. We'll show you places to visit and discover. And we'll keep you informed with all of our lifestyle programming. Focused on topics like health and wellness, coastal living, cooking, tour of homes, real estate, outdoor adventure, history, events and interviews, city news, and so much more. Relax and unwind while you watch and enjoy on TV or online. We have places to be and people to see right here on GITV. This is City Manager Jim Drum, and we're here with the City of Brunswick in depth. And today we're going out on the road, literally out on the road. We're here at Norwich Street and J Street in, in downtown Brunswick. And we're here today to learn a little bit about our uh, plans to improve the Norwich Street corridor. So uh, I'm going to walk over and we're going to see what's happening here and uh, a lot of activities on Norwich Street. Now we've, we've talked about the Norwich Street uh, initiatives that we've had in the past and uh, it's been a long time that there's been some plans to do something to improve Norwich Street. This is one of our oldest business districts and it needs a lot of help. And uh, we, we came together what, earlier last year in the Congress for New Urbanism, uh, came together with a plan. Would you tell us a little bit about how we did that? I know we've talked about it on the show before, Yeah. but tell us how we got here today. Yeah, um, it's super excited, exciting. Actually, the um, Congress for New Urbanism invited the city of Brunswick to apply for a grant um, for some planning work. So we got together with some awesome consultants that came and and loved on this street for um, the last year. We had um, Kronberg Wall and uh, architects out of Atlanta. We had Georgia Conservancy, Symbiosity out of Savannah, Canvas Planning, Thompson Placemaking, and the Bleakley Advisory Group. And there was probably a dozen or more um, consultants out here within the last year. And they helped us figure out a plan. And the idea behind the plan is that it's not one that's just sitting on the shelf. And that's why we're out here this weekend to say, we're setting our example. We want the public to be out here and to be um, helping us be creative because this is this is the public's plan. And so um, okay. we, we're playing on the street basically. Well, part of the plan is street improvements yes. and to make a sort of placemaking. And we hear that a lot in uh, community planning these days. How do we do more to, for placemaking and let people know they've arrived somewhere? So, I mean, uh, I guess we're at the intersection of J. You can sort of see you've arrived. <laughs> right. The whole idea of the J in the middle of the intersection, and we'd like to do it on all the intersections, um, is to, to give it a little bit more sense of place and to do really cool um, artwork here in the middle of the intersection. 
Um, you can see we also did some crosswalk paint and some of this is just chalk paint um, because it was really just experimenting with what's work, what's going to work and what isn't. But um, some of this we were able to um, do permanently and just really get to be creative out here um, in the intersection. Well, so this is really exciting because we're seeing a lot of residents and business people here today and they're coming forward to look at this plan of um, really what we can do to make Norwich Street better as a, as a business district. Exactly. So it's, um, I know that we're not really building it all today. This is sort of like to imagine what it could look like if we make the improvements, right? Yeah. So. Um, we've got a ton of folks out here. Uh, the businesses that are on Norwich Street, we just really wanted to um, encourage them and give them a little extra support. Uh, this bike boulevard is kind of an example of what we'd like to see down the entire Norwich Street. Right. We also have some awesome folks on our consultant team that have come from far and wide to hang out with us um, this weekend, which we're excited about. This is probably the sixth time, at least, that they've been out to Norwich. Um, That's fantastic. And, and so now you, you've, uh, you were part of the planning early on. I was. I'm an urban designer. I work with the Georgia Conservancy. So as Bren mentioned, we had a big partner team that was awesome. Um, and the Georgia Conservancy, if you don't know, we're a 51-year-old statewide organization. And for us, Norwich Street is a lot about sustainability. How do we reuse what we already have and make it better? And as you see, we're kind of testing out all those ideas this, this morning on Norwich. And it's, it's a lot of fun. A lot of people have come out to be a part of it, and we're seeing a lot of uh, artistic ability here. And I think that was part of the concept, wasn't it, that this would be a little bit different than your traditional historic Main Street? This is really as a, a eclectic or artistic flair? Yeah, celebrating what's already going on on Norwich and, and, and enhancing it, making it better, making it more visible. Um, but also knowing that it's a different thing than historic downtown. We love historic downtown Brunswick, but Norwich is kind of special and unique in its own way. And I think this is just showcasing all of that. Um, yeah. Okay. So you've had a lot of fun working on this. We've had a lot of fun working in, in Brunswick on Norwich. It's, it's great to see the leadership here. I think um, Bren especially and her whole team has just taken this plan and made it something even bigger and more implementable. I mean, it's, it's just what we hoped. And the plan really took into account both retail and commercial aspects of what's going on in Norwich Street, but also the residential, because we know there's a lot of folks that live around here. And so what do those housing options look like now and in the future? True. And I think that's one of the elements you looked at is potentially that some of these old commercial sites could be used to rehabilitate it and built into housing. Yeah, absolutely. And, and we think it's really feasible. We had some great architects on the team. Um, and frankly, that's what our market research told us as well, is that there's, there's a need for housing. We're here with Brunswick City Commissioner Johnny Kaysen here on Norwich Street. And uh, now, Commissioner, you grew up in Brunswick, right? I grew up in Brunswick. I sure did. I uh, have lived here all of my life, lived in Urbana Park, and used to uh, ride my bicycle in the mid 50s out here at Norwich Street to get a haircut <laughs> at Joe's Barbershop. And that haircut cost me 20 cents. And then it went to 25 cents. But I was still riding the bicycle when it went to 25 cents. Now, now there's a story that apparently and historically there was a streetcar that came down Norwich Street. You, you don't remember that though, is that right? That was before your time? or That was, that was before my time, yeah. I, I remember the bicycle very well coming okay. out here before school, uh, leaving Urbana Park over in the middle of Urbana Park and uh, riding right out here to what was Joe's Barbershop was next to Crandall Hardware. It was owned by the Crandall family that many of the streets in Brunswick are named after and not only did I get my hair cut there at Joe's Barbershop next to Crandall Hardware, I uh, bought my first baseball glove there for $5 wow. at Crandall Hardware. So now a lot of the shops that you remember that were here, some of them have kind of moved on to the mall and other places, or maybe some of those folks retired. They, they have all mostly gone. Uh, we're sitting right down on the side of the street from where Moran's drugstore used to be. and. Uh, Mr. Moran was a well-known pharmacist in town. Uh, across the street there was Dorsey's Shoe Shop. That Mr. Dorsey and his family were well-known folks here and uh, okay. uh, had so many people here that, uh, that were here back in the, one business that was here in the 50s was Central Hardware. 
Uh, Central, they're still here today. Central Hardware is still here today, and I don't want to overlook that. And I appreciate them being here and and uh, and their families still having the continuity to, to hang on and be in the hardware business in uh, downtown Brunswick for many, many years. Well, now you know that CN, uh, CNU has uh, done a very nice plan for Norwich Street. It's not going to look like it did ba maybe back in the 1950s and 60s, but it's going to kind of reimagine and redevelop what it could be in the future. So what do you think? You're out here today painting, and you're, so you're part of this initiative. I really think it's great, and, and I believe that uh, as Norwich Street served a different purpose back in the 40s and the 50s when it really was the uh, commercial district for the city of Brunswick, I believe that Norwich Street can be repurposed as much of the city of Brunswick can, but Norwich Street can still be a vital corridor and, and really and truly in the years and the future to come can play a vital role for the citizens of the city of Brunswick. And just happy to be here and happy to see this happening and uh, look forward to as much of the uh, revitalization as I can be a part of. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate the coming out and working today. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> thank you, everybody, for what they're doing out here. It's great. It is. Hi, we're here at um, Creepo Records and Comics, and we're here with uh, Tony Mills, the owner. Howdy. Hey, Tony. Now, you've been here a number of years now. You're on Norwich Street, That's right? That's right. And you have, uh, you have this business, which has been open, I think you said, was it four years? Four years for the record store. Okay, and you've got a couple other businesses. Tell us what your, what your businesses are here. Well, I started out uh, tattooing. I had a, uh, the tattoo shop's called X-Ray Tattoo. Uh, we were down the street for about seven years, okay. uh, five blocks south of here, and we've been next door here for six years. Now, besides that, you have another business. You have a couple of storefronts on Norway. Right. We're in uh, Creepo Records and Comics. Uh, we deal in primarily records and comics, but pop culture stuff in general. And uh, we had a live music next door called Heebie Jeebie. It was an all-ages venue, and it was uh, in operation for about three and a half years. Okay. So now today we're here, uh, we're working on uh, our plans for Norwich Street, and I guess you've seen a little bit about it. Uh, what do you think? Do you think this uh, plan to re redevelop and revitalize is a good thing? I think it's long overdue. Yeah. <laughs> I was excited about this street when I first moved here. I, I parked across the street and looked at these buildings and saw what they could be. And I actually drew a rendering of the, of the spaces with businesses in them and, and stuff. So I think there's tons of potential on Norwich Street. It's loaded. There, there is. I mean, it was, it, as we heard earlier, it's, uh, it was built somewhere in uh, the 1920s, 30s, and 40s, the different buildings. Do you know how old these buildings are right here on this block? I don't know the exact age, but that's you got the era right. Yeah, okay. I think it's early 30s for most of them. Okay. Yep. And and I know you're out here and you've kind of blazed the trail, so maybe other businesses will come out and join you. I know you have the uh, the restaurant uh, also a little down the sidewalk here on this block, but uh, a few others out there. Yeah, the restaurant. It's a Mexican restaurant. It's really good, authentic Mexican food. It's called Los Primos. Sounds good. I might have to have yeah. lunch there. It's delicious. <laughs> Well, very good. Now, your hours. A lot of people are walking down the streets here today, and I know that uh, they're probably wanting to come back, and, or they may be watching it on our program, and so they want to know what your hours and how to find you. How would they do that? Well, the tattoo shop and the record store are both open Tuesday through Saturday from 11 to 6. And I tattoo by appointment, so you can reach me any day. Is there a telephone number they could call? Yes, yeah, 912-996-2649. All right. Well, great. Thanks, Tony. Good talking to Thank you. Thank you. In a little cafe, just the other side of the border. He was sitting there giving me looks that made my mouth water. Well, hi, I'm at 
Los Primos Authentic Mexican Restaurant at 1920 Norwich Street here today during our celebration. And I'm here to see how lunch is. Have you, you've all eaten here. Did you enjoy the lunch today? It was great. This is our first time here, and I had the chicken tostadas, and they were delicious. How about you? What did you I'll put a vote in for the chicken tacos. They were amazing. Best tacos in Brunswick. The best tacos in Brunswick, and that's great. Now I see you have some Coca-Colas. They're the only place on Norwich Street you can get a Mexican Coke. So is a Mexican Coke different than an American Coke? It is. It's made with real sugar cane. So. All right. I'm looking forward to that. So I think I'm going to have some lunch with my family. It's good talking to you. Bye. Well, Kiernan, are you ready to have lunch? Yeah, yeah I'm ready to have lunch. All right. We'll see what they have here today. Oh, we're good. How about you? Well, uh, you're, you're Esmeralda, right? Join us for a moment or two. We want to talk about uh, Los Primos and, and, and your uh, restaurant. How long has it been here? Um, it's been here for about three years. It started off with just the store and that side of the restaurant, and then last July it grew into this side of the restaurant. Has, has business been very good since you've grown? It sounds like it's been successful. It's been successful. It's grown a lot more. It used to be, like I said, just those little eight tables over there, and we had to expand into this, so it's been doing good. Well, great. Um, now, are you open? What's your hours? Are you open every day, five, seven days a week? Yes, sir. We're open every day. Um, Monday through Thursday, we're open from 11 to 8. And then Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, we're open from 11 to 9. Okay. Could you tell us a little bit about the menu? What kind of things would we find on the menu? What would, what would you recommend? I can recommend about anything on here. It's all authentic, and our base here is everything's made here. We don't like to use processed food or anything, including our meats. We get um, balls of meat, we cut it down. We're basically our own butchers, everything. We like to handle everything here from our salsas, everything. Um, a lot of people like the empanadas. Um, I don't know, have you ever had an empanada? I've had an empanada. Uh, yeah, I have. They're very good. Yeah, um, a lot of people like the empanadas and the huaraches and the enchiladas. Um, the huarache is a homemade tortilla about this long, and it comes with beans, um, cheese, and then your choice of meat, lettuce, tomato, avocado, uh, cheese, a crumbling cheese, and a Mexican cream. And it, uh, that's what a lot of people like around here. Okay, it sounds very good. I think we're going to have to look through the menu and we're going to have to decide, but I know one thing you want, Karen, and what do you want? I want an orange Fanta. You want an orange Fanta? Yeah. So want a bottle or a bottle? bottle? All right. Okay, we can start with that, and we'll look over the menu. Thank All you very much. It, it's a pleasure. Nice to meet you. Thanks. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Well, I had a great lunch at Los Primos, and I think you did too. Yeah, it's awesome food, and they had some great specials over there too. They sure did. I hope everybody has the opportunity to come down and uh, try the businesses out here on Norwich. I think a lot of people, this is a surprise of some of the things that are already here. Exactly. You know, we really chose this block because... We've got some super cool, creative folks out here already, and we just really wanted to give them some extra, um, some extra attention from the city and from the uh, get the community out here to uh, to use the businesses that are already doing great work out here. We've had a great day out here, and I know we're getting ready to wind it down, but uh, this is just the beginning for Norwich Street. We're out here with beautiful artistic uh, uh, artwork, and uh, we're going to take it intersection by intersection, and we're going to put some uh, funds to this, and we're going to see some changes on Norwich Street in the next few years, aren't we? Absolutely. I'm really excited. You know, we had a bunch of artists come out this morning and um, during the day and really talk to me about ideas, of, um, what they want to do in the future. And so I am excited to participate with the community and just uh, uh, do this kind of event up the whole street and really give, give Norwich some much needed, um, some much needed love. Absolutely. So I, I want to thank you, Bran, and I, I know you said that you had a lot of great volunteers today, and I, I guess you want to say some things to them? I did. I had um, such great folks coming out and helping with this event. I mean, everybody that has these Rethink Norwich Streets uh, t-shirts on, but also so many more people came out um, to just participate and to pay attention to this street and this neighborhood, and we're super excited. Thank you all for coming out. Thank you to those who helped paint um, everything and just came out and had fun um, thanks to the music and to Tony who's got some great businesses down here and cool artwork um, Los Primos is awesome and um, we're gonna you know keep continuing down the block we, we have a lot of great businesses down here so we want to see more people come to Norwich Street. Well as we end the show today and we end the uh, our program and everything we've done here today this is I want to say it's just the beginning for Norwich Street 
So keep tuned and uh, check in with us and see the changes that are coming.